Do you have a business that serves your local community? Are you trying to take your business to the next level? Do you struggle to understand your business numbers? Well, stop working harder thinking you're going to make more money. That's not how it works. Each week we go over how to understand and leverage your business numbers to not only create more sales, but more importantly, how to create more profits. Remember, it isn't about how much you sell. It's about how much you keep at the end of the day. My name is Tammy and I'm on a mission to help badass business owners like your yourself, put more money in your pocket. So whether you're a badass or a badass in the making, let's get this party started. Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. Listen, today I want to talk about your business. And I want to talk a little bit about when you got into this business, more than likely you were driven by something, something that sparked you to want to create this masterpiece of a business. And one of the things that happen when we start a business is we start off all gung-ho. And typically it's because we are really good at what it is we plan to do. And even if we're not super great at it, or it's not our life's passion, we see that it's something that we can build into a really good, solid business. So we get out there and we just start plugging away and we start creating this business. And then what happens is, for a lot of people, is one day you kind of wake up and you're like, wow, I've created this business, but at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of spinning my wheels. Uh, some people wake up and they discover that they they need to grow the business, but they're not quite sure how. Some people uh, wake up one day and realize that they, they've got more business than they can handle, but they don't know how to make the tweaks that they need to make. Some people wake up and they don't have business at all and they're trying to figure out what are they doing wrong. Uh, and you might find that you, you're in one of these stages. I'm, there, there's others. But one of the things that, that happen is we go into the business in our uh, hat that says, hey, I'm going to do it all and I'm going to make it happen. Because let's face it, the vast majority of businesses that start out are single operator businesses. Or maybe you started the business with your buddy or a friend, but at some point, one of the people decided, to, hey, this isn't my gig. My, this ain't my jam. You can have the business. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of business owners over the last few years who were in that situation. They either today currently have a partner who is not engaged in the business or hurts the business and they have all the desire and will to take the business forward and they just need to figure out how to make that break or their business owner bailed on them at one point or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, what, what happens is there's only so far that we can get in the business before we have to take a pause and we have to say, okay, I need to seek something from someone or somewhere that's going to help me run a better business. So what happens is, for example, that's why people listen to podcasts, okay? One of the reasons people listen to podcasts, they go onto YouTube, they, they, they look and seek guidance elsewhere. Now, some people will, will turn to books and, and they devour books and what it is that they have to say. Um, you know, er, everything's a little bit different. I know a lot of people that, for example, listen to this podcast is because they hope they tune in for whether it's a, a motivation or it's to get a little nugget that they can run with, uh, whatever the case may be. They stick around because they find value. They find value more often. Is everyone going to be a hit? Probably not. But they find value enough to where they stick around, which by the way, I hope you stick around. Um, so at the end of the day, the biggest thing is, is we come to this realization that we need some help. I have this saying that says, just because you know something doesn't mean you understand it. And in Michael Gerber's The E-Myth, one of the things that he talks about is the fact that as business owners, we one of the things that business owners do a poor job of overall is they think that nobody knows their business like they know their business. So therefore, they're kind of closed off to hearing any kind of information or advice about their business. And that is so true. But it also could be a detriment to your business. Because here's the thing, you don't know everything about your business. And if you don't believe me, then just ask yourself, how strong are you at bookkeeping? How strong are you at marketing? 
Okay. For most people, that alone knocks you out saying that you don't know everything about your business. Now, you might know some things, you might be growing in those areas. Now, no one understands your business like maybe some of the technical aspects of your business, okay, or some of the quirks of your business. But I think you would be surprised at how common businesses are from business to business to business. When I was a young pup, when I was coming up through Home Depot, I, I went through a meeting with our uh, founder, Bernie Marcus, back in the day. And uh, I remember him saying that, you know, guys, we might be in the hardware business, but at the end of the day, you're in the people business. Because if you learn how to run a business, you can run any business with any products or any services, because it's all about serving the customer and providing the need that they have, because ultimately they're the ones with the money and they're the ones that are going to pay you. And that is so true. I've seen it not only play out in my career with the various different things that I've been in, but I've watched and studied other people and it's the same thing. That's why sometimes you'll see somebody who can pick up another business and be very successful at it because they, you can learn the technical side of any business. Um, you may not know the ins and outs and the, the intricacies, if you will, but the basics of it, you can learn. And a lot of CEOs, for example, will go from one company to something completely different and be extremely successful. And the reason is, is because they understand business and they understand how to connect the dots to having superior product, to having superior customer service, to all the different things. Matter of fact, if you watch uh, uh, The Profit, those of you that have been longtime listeners know I love The Profit and you'll notice he goes into different types of businesses and it all comes down to his people, process, uh, product. Oh my God, I totally forgot what it was. Uh, but you'll you'll know that you know it, it's the basics of it. Now, the reason that I'm going on this little mini uh, tirade is because I want to do something that I haven't done before, and I really want you to stick with me because I think that you're going to find some really good value out of this uh, if it goes off the way I have it planned in my head. And that is this, the number one recommended book out there for small business owners is The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. And I've read it several different times. I recommend it to everybody all the time. I think it's the number one book every small business owner should have. And the reason is, is it really helps get your head around the concept of the fact that you can't be the doer in your business. You hear me talk about being the doer in your business all the time. Michael Gerber calls it the technician in your business. It's the person who actually does the business because that's only going to get you so far. Now, that might be what your plan is. Your plan might be just to have this business that you are the only person in it, which is fine, but there's better ways to make money by being a solopreneur as well. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about the sales that you take in, it's about the cash you keep, okay? It's about the profits you keep. And you can still take the concepts that come up in the e and apply them to your business. Because even if you don't you know, want to do the parts about expanding your business like it gets into, that's fine. But really dial in master how to become the ultimate business owner within your business, whether you're staying single or you're going larger. Now, the book is awesome, amazing, because you kind of have to go through it a couple different times. Because I find that each time I go through it, I get a whole new perspective and thoughts. Because obviously, every time we do something, we add in new layers of information, new layers of education, things that we've been through, experiences we've had. So we read things a little bit differently. Uh, so even if you've read the e-myth in the past, I really want to encourage you to go back through it again. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm not necessarily doing a book report, so don't, don't go down that path. I'm going to take the book and I'm actually just going to go through it, but I'm going to do several different episodes. And I don't know if it's going to be three episodes or five episodes, whatever the case may be, but I'm going to take a concept from the book and really put my spin on it. Okay. Not just what he says, but I want to, to give you my take on it. So it, it will still feel like my podcast with me giving you my, my thoughts and everything else, but I'm going to kind of follow the format to try to help connect those dots for you guys. And I highly recommend that you get the book. So what I'm going to do is I will, I'll be referencing it in these episodes, but also there is a link below uh, in the show notes. If you would like to get the book, 
uh, that way you can kind of, you know, if you, you like a certain episode that we do and you want to dive in more, you can go, you know, grab it and, and, and uh, study it even further because I think that it's really going to resonate and speak to some of you guys. And it's interesting because as I'm reading through it this this time, after all these, I've done a lot of coaching calls between the times that I've read it. And it's so funny because I see your guys' businesses in some of the examples that are used. And uh, I, I really love that part. So, so here's what we're going to do. Like I said, we're going to, we're going to kind of break take this e-myth and we're going to talk about the concept. So today, just to get us going, I want to kind of talk about some of the the points that we've already talked about a little bit so far. And one is that you've got to be a lifelong learner uh, because you've got to want to to improve your business because you are an expert at what it is what you do, but yet you're not an expert at all the other pieces to your business. And what happens is, uh, you kind of get yourself into this position where when you get stuck, you just assume that nobody else can help you out because you're just like, well, they don't understand my business. So, you know, I'm just going to trudge on through. And what happens is you keep doing the definition of insanity where you do the same thing over and over, hoping to have a different result. And the reality is it doesn't really change. And then you become a statistic because let's face it on the statistic side on small businesses, it doesn't look pretty because in the first year or two, 50% of new businesses will go out of business. And then by the 10th year, 90% of business owners are out of business. And in some types of businesses, it's even faster than that. One of the highest failure rates, for example, is in restaurants. They don't even make it to the 10 years. Most of them only make it to the third or fourth year because they they really, they know how to cook. They know how to create this, you know, you get bakers and you get people that love, you know, in the food industry, they love what it is that they do. And they are amazing at it. And they think that just because people love their food and love their cooking, that they're going to be a successful business owner. But it's only then that all of a sudden it blows up in their face because you've got all these food costs and you've got all of these expenses that go along and, and, and whatnot. And next thing you know, they're, they're, they're selling tons of food, but they're making no money. And it's because they're missing the 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 business side behind the scenes, which is creating and causing some of that problem. You know, uh, a lot of times, for example, people uh, manage by luck or they hope they get lucky and they they keep going and, and it's just they're stumbling forward they're, they're And then there's people that are a victim of their success. They're doing so well that they still fail. Take like the example I just used with uh, with the food industry. There's there's restaurants. Have you ever like seen a restaurant in your community or, or somewhere that you've lived that uh, was busy or was packed all the time and, and, and did really well, but yet then they closed their doors? Of course you did, okay? And the reason is it was how the business was run behind the scenes. Now, that doesn't mean they ran a bad business. What it meant is that they ran a business that they couldn't make a profit at. Um, and the reason they couldn't make a profit is they they did not dive into those cost of goods, into those expenses, if you will, and really dive in to see what it would take for them to be able to turn a profit. Uh, for example, on a restaurant, they might have this very large menu of stuff, but in order for them to carry that large menu of stuff, they have to carry tons of different types of food to be able to produce that all. Well, guess what? If the food doesn't sell, it goes bad. You got to throw it away. Your product costs go up. That's why you see some of the most successful uh, food places out there. They have a limited menu. They only do five things or six things and they do them well. It's because they can turn and burn that stuff and they've learned how to create the turns necessary and to create that uh, dynamic to where they're selling tons of it. All right. So there's all kinds of different things that go on there. You know, because here's the thing. If you're feeling kind of stuck, you can keep doing what it is that you're doing, but you're going to keep getting the same result first, you're going to continue to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week, and you're not going to get anywhere. So you have nothing to lose by saying, hey, let me study somebody who's made a lifetime out of studying small business owners. And that's the thing I like about the Emeth Revisited. I mean, this guy has been pounding this for almost 40, 50 years, and he has studied and studied and studied and studied these small businesses and what they had in common. And one of the things that he talks about is when he studies the most successful small businesses, one of the things that they have in common is lifelong learning. They 
he uses different words. These are my words, but he, they, they, they have this desire and this passion to learn more about how to be a better business owner. Okay. They, they, they've wanted to learn how can they take their business to the next level. They, they want to learn how do I stop being the person who produces everything? How do I stop being that doer, if you will? And how do I start leveraging people and systems and processes? Okay. To run a better business to make more money. And this way I can have a life. I can have a business and I can have a life. Now, how many of you listening today can say that you have a life and you have a business? In most cases, the majority of you are going to say they're one in the the same, that you really don't have a life. Your life is your business. And the reality is you can have both. Okay. You can have a growing bank account, you can have time off, and you can still have a thriving business. And thriving doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a bunch of employees or even one employee. It just means that you run a better business that produces the profits that you need to be able to have the lifestyle that you want and the business that you want. Is it going to be easy? Oh, hell no. Okay. But is it worth you diving in and trying to figure out how to be a better business person? Absolutely. Okay. All day long, it will allow you to do that. You know, I want to read a passage from the book really uh, quick. So hang with me here. He puts in here, contrary to popular belief, my experience has shown me that people who are exceptionally good in business aren't so because of what they know, but because of their insatiable need to know more. The problem with most failing businesses that he has encountered is not that their owners don't know enough about finance, marketing, management, or operations. They don't. Those things are easy to learn but they spend all of their time and energy defending what they think they know. And the greatest business people I've met are determined to get it right, no matter what the cost. And that goes back to what I was talking about. You have to be humble and you have to, to, to say, hey, I'm going to learn more. I'm going to be have an open mind. I'm not going to shut people down that they just don't understand. I, I get that. That comes from a protection mode. It's your baby. Okay? Nobody touches baby. Nobody puts baby in the corner with some uh, dirty dancing movie. But but it's true. I think about it. Your brothers and sisters could have been the biggest schmucks in the world. But if somebody else starts to say something bad about your family or your brothers and sisters, you want to defend them left and right. It's okay for you to bash them, but you don't want anyone else to. Your, your business is the exact same way. You want to defend your business. And I'm here to tell you that, that you really cannot... Uh, afford to do that. You, you, if you really want to take it to the next level, you can't do that. Here's another passage from the book. And it says that the problem is not that small business owners don't work. The problem is that they're doing the wrong work, meaning you putting your focus on the wrong thing. And as a result of this, their businesses end up in chaos, unmanageable, unpredictable, unrewarding. Uh, And this is so true because how many of you, this is a good point, how many of you wake up in the morning and you realize that, oh, you know, as much as I love my business, I don't want to go do it. I don't want to deal with the craziness. I don't want to deal with the chaos. I don't want to deal with the pains that I'm going to have throughout the day. Is it worth it? But then you have to get up, right? Because it's the only way that you get paid. So we get up and we do it again. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to, to, to think about the fact that we are all in a, a similar boat. All right. Most of you are in different s- stages of it, but we're all trying to produce this amazing business that creates amazing sales, has amazing, even better profits, uh, because we want to build something. We want to create something that we can be proud of and that we can uh, either sell one day or pass along to our family and to to pass it down the, down the line or to create this massive empire, whatever your reason is. Um, but we all want to have a successful business. So why not turn to some of the people that have taken their very small business and they've created something that is producing the results that we all want? And that's, that's really what, by reading The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, that's one of the things that he's going to do is he's going to show you those common, common things that people do to, uh, to create that business. So if you, you bear with me, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode because it's at my max that I like to go. But we're going to go on a journey. And here's the thing. 
don't not listen because you think, oh, I don't want to hear about the email. Please, that's the wrong way to listen to this. It's each episode is going to have a nugget that we're going to explore no differently than any other episode that we do. It's just that if you want to kind of put them together, you can listen to them and, and go through the book at the same time. I guess that's the biggest thing. But I'm not going to go through everything in the book because I don't want to do a book report and I'm not here to to do it that way. I'm not here to sell books and do all that. Yeah, it's an affiliate link, but it costs you nothing. I do this because I truly, truly, truly believe that this book can help you really understand how to become a better business owner. It is the gold standard that everybody uses. It's been around for a long time. And I promise you, it, it's stuff that when you see successful people where running their business today, it's had an impact on them. And even if they didn't read it, the concepts in the book that have been taught by other people to them have worked. So it, it, it's, it's definitely going to do that. You know, I, I, my whole thing about doing this is I want you guys to have really successful businesses. And I, I really want to, to, to pull out all the stops to give you all the resources and the things that I think are going to help you uh, create that. And uh, this is one of those things. Well, you know, my sole mission, like I said, is to help you achieve your goals and help you achieve the dreams that you have. Um, because I, I, I just believe in you. I believe that you're worth it and I'm going to do my part to help you do that because that's where I get my joy. I get my joy when you guys reach out to me and tell me uh, how things have been going. I love the fact that when I have conversations with some of you guys and then you reach out six months, a year later and you tell me your successes and where you've taken your business and I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. You know, and some of you guys call me in the beginning and you have already have an amazing business. And I think to myself, oh my gosh, the pressure is so high. How do I help them have an even more amazing business? How can I be part of that journey? Uh, and I also look at everything as how can I help pass along your successes to inspire other people at the same time? Because believe it or not, even though you're still learning and growing and whatnot, I promise you, your story is helping someone behind you become even better and stronger at what they are. Then when you fall down and scrape your knees and you get back up and you have a learning, and if it's a lesson that can be passed on, then it helps somebody else. So it's still just as amazing. All right, I'm rattling again. It's time for me to go. And uh, hopefully uh, you've been a little bit inspired by today's episode. And like I said, we're going to... Uh, just continue some of these topics over the next few episodes because uh, I really think they're things that are going to help out. All right, with that, I am out of here. I will talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now. Hey, badass business owners, before you go, I know sometimes learning your business numbers on audio can be a little difficult. So don't forget to also subscribe to the YouTube channel, Training for Local Small Business owners where each week I try to put out different videos that help you understand these business concepts and understanding your business numbers because sometimes visually can help you understand the concept and make it a little bit easier. Plus I break them down into smaller chunks so this way it's easier for you to understand. So once again, don't forget, head on over to YouTube, Training for Local Small Business Owners. Check the show notes. There's also a link there. Now get out there and kick some ass.